How do you execute a successful response to a hazardous materials incident? By ensuring the safety of firefighters? By taking organized, well-directed action? Or by using resources efficiently? The answer is all three. If firefighters are injured, activities are disorganized, or resources are wasted, your response can't be considered entirely successful. How then do you achieve all three success factors? Only through a well-defined, structured approach and incident command system. As in any emergency, a command system at a hazmat scene provides a structure. A command system helps you become organized, delegate authority, develop plans, execute functions. As a result, you establish control, use your resources, and reduce risk. An incident command system may be modified based on the nature and complexity of the emergency. However, any system should cover five major areas of functional responsibility. Command, operations, planning, logistics, and finance. The command function has overall responsibility for the incident and its outcome. The operations, planning, logistics, and finance divisions report to command and focus on emergency operations and associated support activities. The command function is carried out by the incident commander. Your standard operating procedures must provide guidelines for establishing who has the command function so that this role can be assumed immediately. Once established, the incident commander has several critical responsibilities. The first is overall management of the incident. Command must size up the emergency scene, prioritize tasks, and assess available resources. Then, an overall strategy and specific objectives for dealing with the emergency can be developed and implemented. The incident commander must develop an organizational structure tailored to the demands of the situation. Within the four major divisions mentioned earlier, the incident commander manages the resources, available personnel, equipment, and materials. Command determines the resources needed, summons them, deploys them at the scene, and releases them when they're no longer needed. The ultimate responsibility for the safety of personnel and the public rests with the command function. Based on continuous evaluation of the situation, the incident commander assesses the benefits and risks of various courses of action and modifies them as appropriate. A safety officer should be appointed to advise and assist the incident commander and ensure the overall safety of firefighters and the public. Depending on the size of the incident, command may have other responsibilities. Stabilization, control, and termination of an incident often require the combined efforts of government and private companies. It's the incident commander's responsibility to contact and coordinate them. When several organizations become involved, a liaison officer may be appointed to act as the link between command and these organizations. The public must be kept informed as to the status of the emergency. Their usual source is the news media. Although the incident commander is responsible for this function, an information officer is usually designated to work directly with the media. The incident commander operates from a stationary command post which serves as the communications center for the incident. During the course of an emergency, responsibility for overall command may be transferred from one person to another. Command functions, however, remain the same. Your standard operating procedures should establish guidelines for the transfer of command. In most incidents, the most important functional area overseen by command is the operations division. Operations manages the tactical elements that stabilize, control, or terminate an incident. In hazmat incidents, an operations officer is usually appointed by the incident commander. However, Tactical operations, especially in hazmat incidents, can become extremely complex. To make the tasks more manageable, sectors are established and authority is delegated. Sectors are developed along functional or geographic lines. The hazmat sector is the primary operational division 
at a hazardous materials incident. While operations oversees control activities at the entire scene, including fire suppression, the hazmat sector focuses exclusively on hazardous materials operations. Within the hazmat sector are a number of functions specific to control of the hazardous material. In smaller incidents, one individual may manage all these responsibilities. In larger incidents, these tasks can be assigned separately by the incident commander. Hazardous material sector management has several operational responsibilities. Management must assess the risks associated with the hazard and the appropriate control tactics, establish specific objectives for hazmat operations, dictate the type of personal protective equipment to be used, ensure that hazmat team members are fully briefed, identify isolation, evacuation, and decontamination zones, directly oversee stabilization and control actions, and delegate subordinate responsibilities as the situation expands so that an effective span of control can be maintained. In many incidents, hazmat team members must enter the area of maximum hazard to control the problem. These entry team operations require extremely careful planning and highly structured support. So whenever entry is made, management functions for monitoring and decontaminating entry team members must be in place. Entry team members must be briefed. Selection of PPE must be supervised. Backup personnel must be designated and equipped. Communications must be maintained. And activities in the hot zone must be monitored. The decontamination function is responsible for all operations involving setup and decontamination of personnel and equipment. Procedures for decontamination must be provided, and records of personnel and equipment that have been decontaminated must be maintained. Lack of supervision and direction leads to mistakes and errors in judgment, neither of which you can afford. The hazmat sector is critical to the operations function just as the operations function is essential for the success of the response. The focus of operations is toward the hazard itself, but as you well know, a successful response involves more than operations alone. Planning is one important component. Planning personnel collect and analyze information about the incident, the hazardous material itself, and the resources needed to control it. This information is then summarized and used to develop action plans, project resource needs, and coordinate specialists. Hazmat incidents are time and resource intensive events. There must be a means of providing the personnel, materials, and facilities needed on an ongoing basis. It is the responsibility of the logistics function to fill this need. Because of the number of people and organizations involved, an effective communication system is essential. Logistics personnel supply hardware and operate the communications network. Logistics is also responsible for the rest and rehabilitation facilities for emergency response personnel. Basic medical care, fluid replenishment, and protection from the weather are all part of this function. The logistics function supports operations in a number of ways, such as monitoring supplies of control materials, breathing air and fuel, and the on-scene distribution of these supplies. Monitoring the costs associated with a hazmat incident is the responsibility of finance. This function is usually activated only during longer or more complex incidents. These are the primary functions of an incident command system. But who is responsible for initiating these functions and for delegating the authority to carry them out? The responsibility for implementing the system falls on the shoulders of the person who initially assumes command. As a firefighter involved with a hazmat team, you'll be participating in command decisions at some point. Command must be implemented immediately in accordance with your standard operating procedures. Generally, however, the person in charge of the first arriving fire department unit assumes command. Key decisions must be made in the first few minutes following arrival. 
Although command can be transferred, the actions you take as initial incident commander, such as sizing up the situation, deploying units, and determining resources, set the stage for smooth implementation of the various command functions. Keep in mind that fire departments cannot work alone. You need input from the community you're assigned to protect. You need to know how to interact with other fire departments, police, environmental agencies, and government bodies. You need to become familiar with other emergency command plans that exist so that you can work with, not against, the organizations that respond. An effective incident command system can't assure the success of a hazmat response, but it will certainly improve efficiency and reduce risk, increasing the chances that you'll terminate the incident injury-free.